In today's video, I'm showing you how to make a teapot using only common kitchen items. Everything from cutting to shaping to forming, everything you need to know to make a custom teapot, but using only the items you would find in your kitchen. Now, the first thing I do is I get some clay and I start to wedge it up. I'm not gonna weigh this out because this piece is gonna be a one-off piece, so the weight doesn't really matter. What matters is that I get all the air bubbles out and I begin to roll out the clay to an even thickness. I want this to be fairly thin. The lighter the piece is, the more useful it will be. It will feel better in your hand. So I roll this out using a rolling pin, starting with our first kitchen item. And like I said, I want this to be a even thickness, as thin as possible. You'll notice that the, the clay kind of almost looks like pasta dough at this point. Now in my kitchen, I don't have a ruler. I don't know if other kitchens have rulers, but my bread scraper had a ruler on it. So I used that as my measurement tool and my pizza cutter to cut out the general shape. So I'm gonna cut out a strip of clay, a long rectangular strip that's gonna end up becoming the body of my teapot. Another object that I found really useful um, as a common kitchen item was this little metal spatula. It served a lot of purposes when making this project. So after cutting the slab out, I made it into a cylinder and then scored and slipped it together. I used a fork to score and slip it and just my fingers in some water. Then I pressed the two pieces together to make sure that they stuck together firmly. I used a chopstick to blend the sides together and smooth it out, supporting on the inside with my left hand. After this, I began to shape it, and this is where I first ran into some difficulties. The clay was so wet and soft that turning it was extremely difficult, especially without a turning table. If you have some type of turning table to um, like turn cakes or things like that, that would make this a lot easier but I didn't have that so I'm just doing it by hand and after much time and work we ended up with a semblance of some shape so here I'm just stretching the middle out the belly of the pot out and pinching the top in this will end up being actually the bottom of the pot but we're just trying to round the shape out right now so after that, I took a lid or the top of one of those mason jar lids, and I used that as a measurement tool for getting the circle for the base. I pinched out the edges of this little circle um, to make it a little bit easier to blend in later, and then I scored and slipped it to the bottom of my teapot. You can see me using the tool again to shape it and smooth it, and then I flipped it over and began to shape the top. Now the top is just the same as the bottom. The process is exactly the same. You stretch out the sides and then pinch in the top to create a ball shape or whatever other shape you're trying to make. So here I'm just rounding out the bottom and smoothing out the outside shape. Then using a knife, I scored and slipped another piece to the top the same way that I did for the bottom. So right now my teapot will be a completely enclosed shape. Um, and this will make it a little bit easier for me to get an even circle later on when making the rim and the foot. So here I decided which lid to use and I decided to go again with the mason jar um, because it gave me a little bit more flexibility. And so this piece right here that I've cut out, this will end up being the rim of my pot. And so I scored and slipped it on there. I used an icing scraper to help me get these little dimples on the top of my pot and reinforced it using the metal spatula. Then I used the same mason jar lid to cut out the foot on the bottom of the teapot. I cut out both the outside and inside and that gave me a really nice ledge for my foot. I just cut out the inside of the circle using a steak knife and then cleaned it up again using the same scraper that I did for the top. 
To accent the top piece, I decided to add little lobes in the side of the teapot. And I used, again, the metal spatula to just indent and press in these little lobes. And I had to work my way around. You can't just press in as far as you need. You have to slowly press those in as you work your way around. Next, I moved on to the spout. And to do this, I just shaped it by hand. You'll see me sped up here. I'm trying to get the shape that I wanted. I finally got something that I was happy with and that I felt matched the shape of the pot. After assembling the spout, I cut an opening for the lid and cleaned up the edge so that there was a nice straight wall for the flange of my lid to fit in. By this time, the spout is dry enough that I can take it and cut it in half and hollow out both sides. This is really tedious work, uh, especially when your spout is super small like this one. Uh, it just took a really long time also. I had a really hard time finding the right tool, the right kitchen tool to pull out all of the clay on the inside without destroying the tiny little spout. So I ended up moving from a bunch of different tools, including um, the fork, the knife, pretty much whatever I could get my hands on to try and core out this little piece while keeping the integrity of the shape. Once the spout is completely cored out, I need to score and slip it back together without crushing the spout, and then I need to smooth out the seam so that it doesn't look like it was there at all. Once the spout's assembled, I will drill a hole in the side of the pot about the width of the spout, and then score and slip the spout and put it onto the body of the pot. I need to make sure that I've scored and slipped this really well, and that you press really, really firmly. If you don't, the spout or whatever you're putting on will be likely to pop off later. The compression is what holds the clay together. So I decided the spout was a little bit tall for the teapot and decided to cut it off right at the level of the rim. And I think this looks a lot better. Next, we need to make the handle for the teapot. And to do this, I just rolled out a handle. Um, there's a lot of different ways that you can make a handle. But for this teapot, because it was so small, I decided that rolling it would be the best. So I cut this to the shape that I wanted and shaped it on the table and kind of dry fitted it to the teapot and then put it aside. Next, I need to make the lid. So back to rolling out clay and cutting out circles. Same process as before. I just took the lid and cut them out. This piece will be the bottom part of my lid. The lid's actually going to fit in two pieces. So. This will be the top, and what I did is I cut it out and I pressed it into the jar lid to give it that domed shape. And you can see here what it's about to look like on the pot. Just like that, it will be slightly domed. So once that's dried and set up a little bit, I took the top part and I scored and slipped it to the bottom part, creating a small cavity on the inside. And I did this just with the knife. I pressed it together to make sure that the slip was coming out of the sides. And then, again, using the icing scrapers or whatever, again, whatever they're called, I smoothed the edges out. So now I need to make a flange, and that is the piece that fits inside of the pot and keeps it from the lid from falling off when you pour your teapot. In order for this to look really nice, it has to be really thin. So I took some extra effort to make this pretty thin. Then I cut it out using the same method as before and then rolled it up into a cylinder. Now it's really important that you get the measurement right for your flange. You want it to be as snug as possible. So I used the ruler to try to get the measurement as snug as I could. And then I cut this piece and scored and slipped it together. After that, I placed it on top of my lid to figure out where it would sit. 
and using a separate lid, I use the inside of the mason jar lid to get a nice even circle for my knife to cut. And then I cut the bottom part of my lid out, exposing that cavity that I had made before. And then I pressed my flange into that scoring and slipping the bottom and using the chopstick to smooth it out. You can see here me smoothing the bottom part of the lid out, the inside of the lid. And that should fit nicely into our teapot. So I decided to put the same pattern that I had put on the side of the pot onto the lid. And I did that using the knife. I just indented those areas where I had pressed in using the icing scraper. I just further pressed those into the lid. Now what I need to do is make a little knob for the top. And to do this, I did a very simple knob. I rolled it on the table and then cut a little piece of the bottom off to make it flat and scored and slipped it to the top of the pot. I'm really just eyeballing this here. Um, so it could be off, but it's not that far off. I used the chopstick to poke a vent hole in the top. After this, it's time to add the handle. So I kind of dry fitted where the handle would sit on. It's really, really, really important that your handle is right across from your spout. I can't tell you how many times I or a student of mine has put their handle slightly off and then their teapot has been crooked. For some reason, it's just really hard to get it off. So once you make sure that your handle is lined up with your spout, score and slip the base or the top of your handle and press it in firmly to the top of your teapot and then score and slip the bottom. And then using the chopstick, I just blended in the handle to the body of my teapot. And there you have it, a teapot made with only common kitchen items. If you made it this far in the video, thank you so much for watching and hopefully this video goes to show that it is less about the tools and more about the hands that make the object. Hopefully this encourages you and inspires you to go make something of your own. Keep at it, never stop growing, and I'll see you guys in the next video.